Hello there, you're watching Dansky and this is the place to be to develop your creative skills. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to add realistic tattoos in Adobe Photoshop. So to start with, I have an image of my subject and I also have a tattoo. If you have your tattoo as vector artwork, fantastic. Copy and paste that straight into Photoshop, right click the layer and select rasterize, you're all good to go. If like me, you have a JPEG image with your tattoo on, whether it's a tribal tattoo, black and white, color, whatever it is, that's fine, we'll do that now. So I'm going to switch over to my tattoo and go select down to all and it will select the entire canvas and then I can go to edit, copy, switch back over to my main document and go to edit and paste and just zoom out and go edit free transform and hold shift to scale this down proportionally just so it fits within the canvas and then press enter to set that and there's lots of different ways that you can cut out things like this we're going to do it really quick and easy in this tutorial because we will be using blur effects later on so don't worry if your cutout isn't perfect so with the magic wand tool selected, I'm just going to click anywhere on this white space around the edge and hit delete or backspace. And there we go, I've got my tattoo on a transparent layer. And in fact, I'm going to click that text and just type tattoo. And with the background selected, I'm going to right click this, go to duplicate layer and give this a name and just call this subject. And then I can switch off that background layer, but it's there with the original image if anything does go wrong which hopefully it's not going to. So we have our subject and our tattoo. Now the first thing we're going to want to do is actually position our tattoo where we want it to go. So for this tutorial, I'm gonna have it coming up part of her neck, I think, and then onto the cheek as well. Now, if you're deciding on the position, you can also drop the opacity of your tattoo layer. And this is very helpful when trying to position it because you can see what's underneath. So actually I'm going to go to edit transform and flip horizontal and I'm also going to scale this down so we can use that free transform option again and remember to hold shift let's just zoom in and make sure we get this in the right position and just position this something like this and just scale it down a bit more if you do scale it down and then you scale it back up again and you get a bit of pixelation, don't worry because as I say, we will be applying some blur effects. So you might get away with it. It might actually mask any picture pixelation. Flat pixelation, I can't speak. Okay, so when you're happy with that one, just press enter to set that in place. That is permanent. So if you do make a mistake here, you'll need to go to edit and undo. So we've got our tattoo set in place. We can of course bring that opacity back up and the next thing we're going to do is warp this a bit now we've applied a flat tattoo onto a photograph that has you know uh, well it may have faces necks legs shoulders arms toes whatever your image is and of course that's going to have contours and things so we're going to try and match this flat tattoo to our image and we can do that by going to edit down to transform and select warp and you'll see this grid appears with lots of different dots all over it you've got these around the edge and in the middle and we can actually click on these and pull this and warp it into shape. So we'll try and match the contours of the cheek a little bit. We'll bring this round. So depending on your image and your tattoo, this will be different for you. But once you learn how to use this tool, you can effectively just try and map the shape of the tattoo as close to the subject's face as you can. So I'm not gonna to spend too long on this. And depending on your image, you might need to do this a lot more or a lot less. And when you're happy, press enter to set that. So you can see that's what I had before when it was totally flat. And this is what I have now. So just kind of adjusted that angle a little bit. Now the next thing we're going to do is add a blur. Now it's nice that we have our artwork and it's pretty sharp. If you're using vector artwork, it's gonna be like crisp, like super, super crisp, which is great, except it's gonna to look too perfect and it's gonna look fake. So what we need to do is actually zoom in nice and close and with this layer selected just go up to filter and down to blur. Now you can use blur and blur more that will kind of apply very subtle effects and you could reuse them over and over. But for me personally I like to use Gaussian blur because what I can do is zoom in really close and adjust the radius to get that exact amount of blur. Now your amount of blur will vary depending on your image 
and your image size. But for me, I think I'm going to go for about, let's go for about 0.8, I think. So very, very subtle. So it blends in with the photo, maybe even 0.6 and just click OK when you're happy. So you can see with this image, the eyes, nose, mouth, and a lot of the facial features are in focus. And if I just hide this tattoo layer, things like the neck and down here is a little bit more out of focus. And we will touch that up shortly because otherwise it just won't look right on the image if our entire tattoo is the same focus level, but the photo it's on isn't, if that makes sense. So we'll bring our tattoo layer back. We've applied a very subtle blur there. And we're now going to apply even more down here. So if we just drop that opacity down again so we can see underneath that layer and we can select our blur tool, if I can find it. There we go. So we've got the blur tool and I've selected one of Photoshop's default feather brushes with a hardness of zero. And I can change the size of the brush using the left and right square brackets on the keyboard. So you can see I can bring it down, bring it up nice and quickly. And I've got the strength set at 100. Now this might be too strong. You might want to bring it down a little bit or you might want to have it up. This is going to be a really subtle effect. We don't want to create too much of a dramatic jump between the face and the neck, but we need to try and mirror the depth of field that is showing in the photo. So with the blur selected, I'm gonna bring that brush size down and just brush over this whole area. So you can see just one kind of sweep there, maybe just a little bit more up here and down here. And I think that covers everywhere that I'm going to be going around there. All of this that covers the hand will be removed in a moment. So once you've got the blur correct, you can bring that up to 100% again. So we've applied a Gaussian blur to the top half here of 0.6 and then we've manually blurred a little bit more here that comes below that jawline. So the next thing we're going to do now is we're going to apply some blending options to allow a little bit of the skin and the shadows to show through from the image onto our tattoo. This is going to really help that realistic aspect. So let's switch our tattoo layer back on, right click and select blending options. And let's just try and move this out of the way as best I can. We'll put this over here. And then from the main blending option screen, you'll see at the bottom we have blend if gray, this layer and underlying layer. Now you're going to want to hold down the alt key and click on the left part of this two segment arrow on the right hand side. And if you hold down alt and left click, you can drag that left half away from the right half and we'll bring this down and you'll see it starts to blend the tattoo and the color, particularly the lighter colors into the skin and we can actually bring this all the way to the left. Now you may want to vary how much you bring this to the left depending on your image but for this example it's perfect so I could bring that all the way to the left and click OK. And we can either go with that or I can select normal as the blending mode and change that to multiply and it will give that a kind of even more blended through effect. So we've kind of got the aesthetic of the tattoo correct but it's covering the hand and that's you know, not what we want. It's going to be covering the neck and the face in the final design. So we can, with our tattoo layer selected, we can add a layer mask from the bottom of the layers panel and just select the brush tool. Again, select one of Photoshop's lovely default feather brushes, a hardness of zero. And we're going to start by painting into this mask. If you don't know what masks are, there is a video linked down in the description that covers masks in their entirety. So how to use them and it's incredibly helpful and definitely worth learning. So now we're just going to mask all of the tattoo from the hand. So we've got the pieces on the neck here. And we're just going to go over the jewelry here as well because the tattoo doesn't appear on that. Now I'm using a Wacom Inchos Pro. If you'd like to learn more about it, it's linked also in the video description. Uh, they're incredibly helpful. The biggest advantage for retouching like this using a Wacom tablet is that you get control of the pen pressure. So whereas with a mouse, it's still doable with a mouse, but you only get one level of pressure, which is your mouse click. Whereas with the pen tool, you can press like really, really hard or really, really gently. 
So it gives you a lot more control, uh, particularly when you're kind of going around the edges. So something like this. You know, as I get closer to the edge of the finger, I don't want to remove the tattoo from the neck. And I can just kind of ease off with that pen pressure just for sort of maximum precision. It's very, very helpful. So just lots of zooming in and zooming out. In fact, you can zoom in as far as you need to. If you zoom in, you know, thousands of percent and your retouching looks flawless, then when you zoom back out to 100%, it's gonna look amazing. Cool, okay, so uh, we've got a little bit here, kind of coming over the hair. And of course, the tattoo wouldn't continue onto the jaw like that. It would wrap around the neck. That sounds really sinister, but that's the best way I could describe it. Okay, so there we go. So you can see using a Wacom tablet makes short work of any kind of retouching and cutting things out. So much easier than a mouse. And what we could do now is we can actually click in between the layer and the mask and click that link. And what that will do is that will keep the mask in place and we can actually adjust our tattoo. Now we might need to go and remask areas. You can see over here on the left, it's kind of coming out. But if I wanted to bring this a little bit lower, for example, and then maybe use free transform to scale this up a tiny bit. I like this and then press enter. That's something that I can do. And all I've got to do then is just select the mask again and just go in and just remask any areas that have been affected since I've moved it. So that's the beauty of using masks really. And why they're definitely worth learning is because they're very non-destructive. So when you're working, you've got a lot of flexibility to still edit things. And once you're happy, you can select in between the layer and the layer mask. It will bring back that link and we can now move this around with the mask attached to it. So you can see that we've added the tattoo to the neck and the face. And what we can do now is we can adjust the strength of our tattoo. So you can see using that blending options effect really allows some of the skin texture and some of these uh, kind of mid-tones and shadows here as well to really just show through, even if it's very subtly. And we can just bring that opacity down, depending on whether you would like to have a kind of more washed out, aged look to your tattoo, or whether you'd like to bring this all the way up. So that texture coming through from the skin just really helps kind of emphasize that realism. And what we can also do is actually right click the tattoo layer and select duplicate layer. And you'll see that's probably a little bit too harsh, but we can bring this opacity down. So if you would like to have that freshly done, brand new tattoo look, you can actually add a duplicated layer above here. And you'll see it just kind of makes that a little bit stronger. And then you can hold shift to select both of those layers and then go to layer and group layers and then it will group those together. So any other effects, or if you want to add like a layer mask or something and do a bit more work, it will affect both of those layers in the group. So you don't have to go and do one layer and then the other. So for example, one last thing that I'm going to do is if I open up this group, I'll just call this tattoos and go to the bottom of the layers panel, I can add a new adjustment layer and select hue and saturation. And if I want to get rid of the color, I can bring the saturation all the way down and you'll see it affects the whole image. But if we just drag this above the group and right click on the adjustment layer and select create clipping mask, you'll see the arrow points down to our tattoos group. So it only affects that group. And we can then set the blending mode for tattoos to multiply. And it will multiply the tattoos over the skin with the black and white desaturated look added to them. So we then turn that color tattoo into a black and white one. And there we go. That's how to add realistic tattoos in Adobe Photoshop. As always guys, please feel free to leave any questions or comments down below. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you next time.